lucky today to be joined by the Australian Telescope National Facilities Director of Operations, John Reynolds. John, thank you so much for being with us here today. Could you please tell us what your job involves? Well, Carly, my uh, duty is a very pleasant one. I get to look after CSIRO's radio telescope operations. So that includes not only the compact array, which uh, we're looking at now in all its glory, but the Parkes telescope, which many of your uh, students will be familiar with, yeah, I'm sure. we've already visited that one. And a newer telescope in Western Australia called ASCAP, which is uh, a new generation telescope with a really wide, wide field of view in quite a remote part of WA. So not many of your students would have seen that. So I look after operations uh, for all three of those telescopes for CSIRO. Which one's your favourite? <laughs> oh, that's a cruel question. That's like uh, <laughs> asking which of your children is exactly. his favourite. Yeah. <laughs> I really cut my teeth up here as a student. I won't say how long ago. So I have a special fondness for the compact array, but I have a special fondness for Parks as well. Oh, beautiful. This was actually the first telescope that I'd ever observed on as well. So it's got a little bit of a special place in my heart as well. Uh, John, I want to ask, can you tell us a bit about what's happening behind us? Yeah, sure. The, uh, the concept of the compact array was to have a relatively small number of dishes, only six, but to be able to move them uh, every so often and that way build up essentially a larger telescope with more dishes to get the information you need for a, the best quality detail picture. So at the moment we're in the middle of a, what we call a reconfiguration day where the dishes are actually being moved around in, from one configuration into a new configuration. In order to do that we need to be able to supply power and connect the signals up to each antenna in a different spot each time. So behind me you'll see this post sticking out of the ground with a number written on it. So each one of those posts is uh, a parking spot for an antenna and there are a number of different configurations that get cycled through over the course of one or two years in order to give astronomers the complete picture that they need. So uh, that's what's happening today. Wow, okay, that's great. What does the future look like for the compact array? It's got a great future. Uh, this telescope in many ways was designed as the southern hemisphere equivalent of America's best telescope, the VLA which has many more telescopes, it's got 27. We didn't have the budget. <laughs> so that's why we went for six dishes, but on a movable track system. So it is the premier uh, interferometer in the Southern Hemisphere, in my view. The South Africans have a really, really good uh, new telescope called Meerkat, mm. which is excellent at what it does. It's very sensitive, but the strength, the great strength of the compact array is still its uh, flexibility. So we can do many, many uh, frequencies that that go up above the maximum frequency of Meerkat. Uh, in fact, this telescope can go up to millimeter, uh, so-called millimeter frequencies or 100 gigahertz. Yeah, sure. And that was one of the great uh, upgrades uh, that the telescope's been given over the years. That's the reason it's still going, one of the reasons it's, it's still going because of the technology upgrades. So it's not the telescope it was when it was opened in 1988, it's much more powerful. Mm. One upgrade was to add the, this new track that uh, we can see behind us, which the students can't see yet. Uh, to give it north-south extension. Uh, another great upgrade, as I mentioned, was this uh, upgrade to higher frequencies. So that puts us into the uh, three millimetre band and the seven millimetre band, uh, which opens up a whole new area of astronomy like star formation and so on. Exactly, the more millimetres, the more wavelengths that we can see, the better picture we have of what's going on up in the sky, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah you get multiple windows on the, on the sky that you're looking at. So that's what's kept it going, but it still has that uh, flexibility both in the frequency coverage and in the way we can shuffle the antennas around and get quite short spacings uh, where we bring the antennas close together. And that's excellent for looking at galactic structure mm. and doing surveys of uh, the, the galaxy. It's got a useful life way into the future. I'm not even going to put a figure on it. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. It's still doing great science. Yeah, and a really big part of that is the fact that it has been so flexible. There have been so many upgrades and I'm sure that's going to take it very, very far into the future. So are there any new exciting projects happening at the moment here at ADCA? There are, there are, there are two uh, really exciting things happening. Uh, radio telescopes rely on upgrades to keep alive, to maintain their position at the cutting edge. So we've got one really major project happening which will essentially replace the entire digital back end of the telescope. And uh, why are we doing this? Well, a couple of reasons. One is uh, we get greater bandwidth, so we can see 
uh, twice the window on the sky that we can with the current system, but it'll also give us much greater flexibility, particularly to deal with radio frequency interference, which is now becoming more and more mobile phones. Everything now has got its own little transmitter in it. And in order to be able to deal with that, uh, we have to be able to manipulate the data at a lower level and uh, chuck out the bits which are contaminated by RFI. And this new system will be great at allowing us to do smart things to uh, make it more resilient against RFI. So that's the major telescope upgrade at the moment, uh, which is being rolled out. The other upgrade is, uh, with other development, is that we're testing a new low frequency antenna array, which is based on the design of the NWA, the Murchison Widefield Array in WA. And the concept there is to set up a, a network of low frequency antennas right across Australia as part of a new low frequency VLBI array. So that's a program which has only just started, but the start of it will be here, where we'll put the first demonstration or test tile in. So people are pretty excited about that too. Yeah, I can see why, that's very exciting. Again, as you were saying, the window just gets bigger, doesn't it? The, yeah. the window into outer space, it's getting bigger and bigger. And I know ATCA and radio telescopes have had such a huge impact on the field of astronomy already. It's so exciting to see that we're still going forward and we're still making improvements and we'll get to see even more of what's up there. Yeah, and of course the SKA, which is currently um, poised on the verge of construction mm. in uh, Western Australia, that will open up a whole new window at low frequencies as well, which we haven't uh, had for many, many years.